Okay, let's take you now to something entirely different. Let's focus on one of the country's big prides, ISRO. From lunar triumph to solar milestones that we saw stretched out all through this last year, this year has been a huge one for ISRO. Why exactly and what are the achievements that lie ahead? First, we're going to bring you this prepper. So what the last year has looked like in terms of milestones for the Indian Space Organization. After that, we'll bring you to a very special interview. But first, take a look at this recap. Five, four, three, two, one. This last year has been an incredibly exciting one for ISRO, with the organization furthering humanity's footprint in space with each of its own achievements. On TBC, we take a look back at its milestones and bring you a peek into what the future holds for the country's space goals. All necessary clearances are obtained for the launch of LVM3 M4 Chandrayaan 3 mission. It's been a year since Chandrayaan 3 was launched from Sriharikota to the moon. Last August, we made history as India became the first country to land successfully on the lunar south pole's tricky terrain. Yes, you can see on your screen. As the Vikram lander successfully touched down, celebrations broke out across the country, with Prime Minister Narendra Modi saying India is now on the moon. The mission was hailed world over for its innovative, relatively low-cost design, as it cemented India's spot among global space superpowers. In the intervening months, its rover Pragyan has conducted multiple experiments providing valuable data on the moon's surface composition and its potential water ice deposits, which are crucial pieces of information as we ponder the big question of human habitation. Just a few weeks ago, ISRO captured breathtaking images of the Chandrayaan-3 lander Vikram and the Pragyan rover resting on the lunar surface months after having successfully completed their mission. Let's jump forward now from the moon to the sun. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Lift off normal pivot tracking. Easy tracking. Aditya L1 was launched by ISRO on the 2nd of September last year. The goal? observing and helping us better understand the largest object in our solar system. This mission is India's first dedicated solar observatory aimed at studying the sun's outermost layers. It carries seven payloads, all created within the country, to observe various aspects of the sun and to provide vital data to understand solar activities and their impact on space weather. Unlike missions to the moon, which take about three weeks, Missions to observe the sun take months because of the much greater distance they have to cover. A few days ago, Aditya L1 actually completed its first halo orbit around the Sun-Earth L1 point. Aditya L1 continues to be talked about, not just for the data it's provided, but also, like Chandrayaan-3, for the nimble budget. This time of just 600 crores, with which each of these milestones have been achieved. But let's take you now to the big milestone that's got everyone at the edge of their seats. Earlier this year, ISRO's chairman S. Somnath had announced that 2024 would be a year of Gaganyaan readiness. The Gaganyaan mission is the country's maiden attempt to send humans into space. The four Air Force officers who have been selected will be the first Indian astronauts in 40 years and the first ones to make the journey on an Indian spacecraft. Just three countries, the United States, Russia and China, have successfully carried out human spaceflight missions, as they're called, till now. And India is joining the list in 2025. But before that, important test missions will have to go smoothly. An unmanned mission to orbit, a test for the equipment and algorithm, and a test to check the launch pad scenario. ISRO has also finished preliminary design works for Module 1 of India's space station, the Bharatiya Antrik Station. The organization is, as we speak, preparing to submit the station's design plan to the government. 
Each of these achievements come at a particularly interesting time for India's space story because weeks ago in June, a privately developed launch pad was used by Indian startup Agnikul Cosmos to successfully launch a suborbital test vehicle powered by the world's first single piece 3D printed rocket engine. As ISRO congratulated Agnikul for its private sector triumph and the cutting edge ingenuity that went into it, one wonders what electrifying new realms of space innovation and collaboration India will explore over the next few decades. For now, it's an exciting new few years ISRO has planned. Human spaceflight, lunar exploration and ISRO's upcoming Mars Orbiter Mission 2, where it hopes to land a rover on the red planet. All promise an exciting, awe-filled next few years. Not just for all of us, glued to these developments here in India, but for millions watching from all around the world. So we wanted to bring you that recap so that you understand just how busy and how monumental the last one year has been for the Indian Space Research Organization. Each of its achievements and what they entail not just for India but also for all of humanity. We're bringing you today and we're so, so honoured to bring you today this next interview with ISRO's Chief Somnath. He's going to unveil what the future of space exploration is going to look like, what the big plans are for ISRO in this one year. Take a look at this exclusive chat. At the same time, the other focus has been in the last couple of weeks at least is the extended stay of uh, uh, Sunita Williams and Wilmore uh, at the International Space Station. As the head of the space agency here, how do you view it, sir? Because we have a Gaganyaan mission coming up. Are there key takeaways, sir? Yeah, of course, it is a very important uh, observation for us. Uh, in a first flight of a new uh, spacecraft, uh, getting into some difficulties is a very important lesson for anybody who is designing it. Uh, for me, as a Gaganyaan craft is getting designed at this moment, we look at it very ways how situations can crop up of this nature. This could be this or it could be many other possibilities. So we look at it in that manner, how to strengthen it in terms of the design and how to find out alternate ways by which we can crew can be saved in case you end up in problem. These are topics of discussion today. It is a long journey, a difficult journey and we are attacking each one every day, uh, trying to do the managerial task as well as executional, technical executional task. Uh, there are challenges, of course, in terms of numbers or test yeah. compared to the regular launch vehicles uh, the number of tests are huge uh, because the qualification requires that type of demanding and uh, the entire entire success is scrutinized by communities uh, other than isro because there are companies who will look at its uh, reliability uh, very critically before we authorize uh, people to fly so there is something called human rating yeah. uh, and high levels of reliability building on this so all these are happening at various levels then we have to conduct missions without any flow uh, that also is a huge task. So all of these are going well. Uh, of course, little bit stretching of the times are come happening, but I am not concerned about it at this moment. Is that why you said it should be so reliable that you can put a head of a state in that? Yeah, it should be like that. Yeah. No, if every life is precious, I think it should be made for the head of the state. Yeah, the design is ready. It's actually on my table, the whole of the design uh, protocol and design book. Uh, it's beautiful to see that uh, we are able to conceive such a uh, first part of the Bharati Andhrishu station that can be loaned using our current rocket. Uh, but that's not enough. We have to scale it up bigger. So a new rocket is also needed and a bigger space station module is needed. So we have divided the module into five different units. The first two that will be launched by the current rocket called LVM3 and next three will be launched by the new rocket NGLV. Yeah, essentially what we are speaking today are to create the enthusiasm and interest in this domain. Uh, the background work is technical, much more involved, uh, that's happening. Uh, we have configured a very complex mission of two rockets to handle this uh, four modules up there and dock and take it to moon, then collect the sample and come back. So this detailed engineering work has to happen now, whereas the preliminary work is already done. 